I got started in the masonry industry when I was in high school. I don't know where you, how much you know about South Carolina, but uh, I grew up in the rural part of South Carolina, which is in Sumter County. And uh, it was basically a farm um, where I grew up at, on a farm. And when I was in ninth grade in high school, we had two choices. Either we take agriculture or we take brick mesh. And those were the only two options we had. Okay. And, and by growing up on a farm, I didn't want to continue in the farming business, so I chose brick masonry. And that's how I got started at in ninth grade in high school, and I've been doing it ever since. When I graduated from high school, I went to Denmark Tech, which was in Denmark, South Carolina. And I took up brick masonry. I got an associate degree in brick masonry. And um, after graduating from Denmark Tech, I went into the master business as an apprentice. Well, first of all, let me back up just a little bit. Uh, Denmark Tech was four semesters, two year course. And my fourth uh, four semester, I was able to go out on co-op. So I didn't have to go continue at the school. So I was able to work in an apprentice program and I worked my way through that up to where I'm at now. Now there were some lumps in the road, there were some bruises, but we worked through it. Uh, let me back up just a little bit further from that. Um, after going through my apprentice program, there was um, a gentleman that came to me and um, wanted me to partnership with him. And I did, and we worked fine together. When you see the lumps and the bruises, um, we grew kind of fast and we brought in the third partner. And that's when our personalities didn't click because I take a lot of pride in my work. And, and the third guy was all about production. So that's one of the things that kind of drew us apart and then I split off and went on my own. Yeah, I continued to, um, to work my business and then uh, got to the place where I couldn't find the caliber of masons that I wanted uh, to work for me because one of my trademark was pride. So, um, I had an opportunity to uh, go into teaching masonry. And that's when I find my niche and my love because I was able to put my trademark on a lot of those students. When they uh, got out of high school, they was able to take pride in the work and do the things that I would like for it to be done if they was working on my job. So, as a matter of fact, I was able to had some of the students to work for me part-time while I was teaching. So that was a real rewarding part of the masonry business for me. Well, it was good when I first started because the, the kids back in the early 70s when I started teaching uh, is so much different than the kids today. The work ethic was different. I guess that's a lot of the parenting. And um, they really wanted something out of life. Um, not so much today. The kids are tied up today with uh, social media, uh, video games, um, and not the work ethic is not there. And um, that's one of the hardest things now, even the younger generations that are going into the master business is getting them motivated to do quality work and maintain the pride that it takes to become a professional bricklayer. That's hard. Uh, a lot of them is about the, the quick dollar and don't really appreciate the legacy of, uh, of the masonry business. Um, 
So that's very, very difficult now. Uh, when you find one that has a lot of pride in his work, um, work ethic, good work ethic, those are the ones that you try to hold on to and motivate to continue in the business. But it's very, very difficult now. Some of the challenges I face is um, getting qualified bricklayers, getting enough bricklayers. Believe it or not, it's a big, big shortage of masons. Um, I'm up in age now, and um, I get calls all the time about masonry jobs. And one of the things that they said, your name came to me, are you still doing that kind of work? Um, they just can't find people, uh, are masons. Um, so it's, so it's, it's very frustrating and it's very difficult. There's work out there, um, but we need more masons. And one of the things that's a very disturbing to me is that a lot of the schools these days, when I started teaching masonry, it was lots of masonry training programs in South Carolina. Today, I would imagine it's probably 10 or 15 maybe at the most. They can't supply the masons that we need. Um, some of the programs have closed down, um, not by the mason's choice, but forced to be closed because there's other programs they wanted to put in the program in that place they needed the space. Um, computers are good, you can't operate without computers, but a lot of it is moving in that direction. Computers are good, but computers can't build masonry buildings. So um, that's one of the things we face, and, 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 and it's very disturbing knowing how many masons we need and we just can't find them. If you can't find a masonry school to go to, there's two options. Find out where the local uh, masonry contract associations are. Attend those meetings. Um, talk to some of the other bricklayers in your area that know of some of these um, training programs, uh, uh, masonry contract associations. Latch on to a very, very good company and work your way up. Go to the classes uh, after hours. Um, be very focused on the job. Work hard. Uh, as a helper, um, get your work done, and when you get an opportunity to um, spread mortar for Masons, uh, pay attention to what he's telling you, and work your way up. Uh, by doing it that way, you learn it on the job, and um, develop a self of pride. Always keep a positive attitude when someone tells you something because it's gonna be a lasting learning experience for you. I may go off the record a little bit, but one of the proudest, some of my proudest moment is when I met Jesus Christ. And then when I met my wife, who is the love of my heart and when I had my first child, my daughter, uh, another love of my heart, and then my son came along. Uh, I'm so proud of those folks, uh, my family. Um, some of the other proud moments getting to the job is when you can ride by a building and that building is still standing and, 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 and you had a part in building that building um, those are some of the proudest things. And then the other thing is that when you see your students 
of being successful in life. Um, and when you meet them and, 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 and they still talk about what part I had in stealing and motivating their life. Those are some proud moments that you don't ever forget. Be more patient. Um, develop a more of a positive attitude at an early age. Um, when it comes to um, working with your elders, uh, don't think you know everything at a younger age because you don't. Um, and be a good listener. Oh, that means the world. Um, for you to have, for me to have just uh, do a resume, not a resume, but do a biographic, a sketch of myself and, 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 and for all committed to look at uh, just some of my accomplishment and think enough of me to induct me in the, uh, in the Hall of Fame. That means the world um, to me. Um, and I, I just can't think of anything at the moment that is, that is greater than that. That just like um, a, a football player winning the um, national championship or winning the Super Bowl, uh, it, it puts you up on the top. And uh, I, I really feel good about it. And I'm thankful to my peers to um, have thought enough of me to induct me. Knowing that you have done some great things when you get a phone call and a person wants you to do a job for them. And you tell them, say, well, I'm busy and I can't get to it for a period of time. And they're willing to wait until you're available to get to their work because they know you're not gonna cut corners. You're not gonna take shortcuts. It's gonna be done right. So to sum that up with my legacy, always do your best at what you try to do. No shortcuts. Be your best and be proud of your work. <music>